Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 87 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm hanging out on my server, and before we really get into today's episode, I want to give you guys a warning. Don't duplicate the build that I did last episode with the aerial interface. Um, I ran into this problem after I finished recording last episode. It's actually when the player who placed the aerial interface logs off the server. Uh, some interactions with other mods can cause a crash. In this case, it was translocators for some reason, uh, but the problem is on Pneumaticraft side, and the mod author, my Martin is aware of the issue, so he's working on it. Uh, for now, though, I would just recommend not using the aerial interface, um, at least until we get a new version of the pack, and then when that new version comes out, I'll let you know if it's safe or not. So for now, avoid the aerial interface or use at your own risk. It's uh, it's definitely a potential for some problems. Um, but otherwise, pretty happy with my pneumatic craft room, like I said. What I want to do, though, is start working on something different. Hmm, what should we do? Well, Honestly, I'm getting a little cramped feeling inside this base. I mean, things are all right. Don't get me wrong. The base survives and does its thing and is cool, as far as I can tell. Uh, but you know what? It's getting a little tight and cramped in there. There's a lot of room that is being wasted. There's a lot of room that whenever I want to build something new, I just don't have a proper amount of space to put it in there. And I've got all kinds of crazy things all over the place that are just kind of a mess. So what I would like to do, if I can, is set up a new base. Um, I have a couple ideas. Now, obviously, I've, um, you know, many times wound up doing this. What happens in your modded worlds, and it happens to me all the time, is that when you start out with your base, you have to build it around your current technological tier. So right now, I don't have a ton of stuff at the early game, right? I'm, I'm just getting started. There's a few things. So I have like some basic structures set up. And then as I grow into it, I wind up adding more things and adding more things and trying to find room in my existing base. And then I wind up with a basement where I start adding more things and adding more things. And then, you know what? I need more room. So I dig out some spaces around the basement. And then I want to place other things and get to them from in the basement. And then I wound up with another basement. And then I wound up with another basement. And just it gets a little crazy at the end so what i'd like to do is focus on setting up a base that isn't grown quite so organically and by organically grown i mean exactly what happened is we we kind of started out with a basic structure and then just needed to add things and just kind of put things wherever they fit so what i'm thinking today is first off getting rid of this chicken because he's just been bothering me thank you Second off, uh, get started to build an area where I can call home. Now, I've been kind of toying with where I want to do this. I mentioned at the end of last episode or the episode before that, I might go ahead and post on Twitter. I don't... I didn't wind up really doing that because I kind of thought about it, and I have an idea for a base I want to build, and it's a really cool idea, but I really don't think that it's possible within... as, as far as I want it to work. So, what I'm going to do is build a standard base that's going to be like my main base and then i'm going to have a couple you know alternate bases slash sub bases slash outposts if you will where i'm going to have this really cool plan that i have, want to put together and wind up building that so you guys know i'm not really the greatest builder in the world but i'm going to really try on this one because i have this really cool idea i don't want to spoil it too much but it's going to be a sub base it's going to be like an outpost if you will so it's not going to be my main base my main base is going to be built uh in the next couple episodes and i want to utilize a couple of the things that we found recently that can help us i want to use mffs uh my goal is hopefully that i can transport some of my existing structures so, like, I want to try it. I don't know how well it's going to work. And I have to give the warning with MFFS again. Blocks in Minecraft were never designed to move the way MFFS or frames or any of those other mods move them. And when you move the wrong blocks, sometimes they can cause crashes. So be really careful when using MFFS to, to move items and blocks. But I'm going to try to set up a new base and teleport some of the structures that I already have built. Like, I think it would be really cool if I could maybe teleport this whole thing out here, right? Like, just grab my big old tree farm that's out back here and just teleport the whole thing and just zip it straight over to where my new base is going to be that's kind of the plan and we're going to do that as best we can now obviously we're going to have to manually move some things um, but we're going to you know teleport what pieces of this base we can at a time um, there's some mods that i you know have played with and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't and they can sometimes cause issues so we're going to have to like i said just kind of mess around with it a little bit and see what we can move what makes sense to teleport what makes sense to keep the other thing i want to do is start focusing on getting 
uh, the new base set up, and the best way to do that is to make sure that I have access to my applied energistic system from my new base. So, what I think I'm going to do in that regard, what do I have two cakes? All right, I must have done that derpily. See you later, pattern. Uh, what I'm going to do with that is set up a system uh, to be able to interact with my AE system from a distance. And for that, we're going to need to finish building the quantum singularities. So in order to get our quantum singularity, we need to dump a bunch of items into this ME condenser. So let's start off by getting something that can allow us to do that. Um, I'm going to build a cobble gen. I know that sounds like a lot of fun, but we're actually going to have a lot of fun building it because we're going to do it in a slightly different manner, something that I uh, really haven't done much of in the past. So let's get started. Um, again, here we go. I need to find a place to do this, and that's not going to be easy, uh, but we'll figure it out. Let's see. Um, hmm. I mean, it really doesn't matter where I put it, and I'm going to go ahead and stick it on. I'm going to make an ender chest. I'm going to grab some wool. Make a blue wool ender chest. There we go. Cool. Next up, I'm going to need a bucket or two. Um, I really need to fix my lava generation situation. I know I've got a lava gen somewhere. Let's see, what's down here? Because I know there's something hooked up. I mean, I guess this guy's full. Is he being kept full somehow? guess okay so I don't know what white red red or red red white probably is the color for scheming that so why isn't this guy full I'm guessing that whatever was feeding these power gen things the lava has dried up you know what that's why probably because I never really hooked it back up all right not a problem and then I need uh, water so yoink so a nifty mechanic for building a cobble gen is as follows I'm gonna do this down here, why not? In my, just a small little amount of space. So one, two, three. Um, what we're going to want is a piece of cobble there. We're going to want water on one side and we're gonna want lava on the other. And then we just place down an item transfer node. And you can see that it's basically an instant cobble gen. Item transfer nodes will automatically harvest cobble uh, from the block below them if it detects lava and water on either side. So transfer nodes from extra utilities are automatic cobble gens. Now, I don't think the version of extra utilities can, will this dump straight? Oh, it is, cool, look at that, nice. So obviously it's going to quickly harvest cobble, but I wanna speed that up a little bit. So lots of cobble going in here. Now, why are you guys sipping over here? Yeah, the cobble should be going that way. That's a little better. I don't know why it was finding its way over there first, but now it's behaving and landing right where we want it. So obviously the amount of accumulated energy we have in the ME condenser is working beautifully. Nice. Next up, let's go ahead and set this up. So let's see, I've got to uh, speed this up. So let's get mining upgrades. They're in here somewhere. Maybe they're not. It's an extra utilities upgrade and it's always a little tricky to find. There it is, mining upgrade, cool. Uh, this guy's not too hard to make, obviously. Just need an iron pickaxe. So I'm gonna get one, two of these guys, and boom, now I've got four of the mining upgrades. If I go ahead and toss these in there, uh, let's go ahead and toss this in here. See that? Now it's going to mine uh, four blocks at a time. Ooh, much faster, right? Um, and I want to try the speed upgrade. I don't know if speed... Whoa, yeah, look at that. Lots of items. Cool. So it looks like it can't really decide where it wants to go. Into the AE system or into that thing. Not really sure what the difference is, but every now and then it's like, yeah, I want to go over there. Let's grab a speed upgrade or two. So that's the extra utility speed upgrade. I don't know if this is going to increase the speed at which it mines, but we can give it a shot. I think that just increases the speed at which it transfers items. Yeah, so I don't know if that's really gonna help too much. Especially because we don't have much of a transfer speed need. All right, so that's cool. We're cruising here. Let me check out my cobble gem situation. Yeah, we've got plenty of cobble in there. Still not sure why it's choosing to go this way. I mean, what do we got? Ah. There we go. This is an item sync module. 
default route, yes. So you should not be accepting cobble unless terminus module. Yeah, he's got cobble. Terminus module should take precedence over the default route, I thought. Um, but maybe for some reason it's not. Hmm. Strange. All right. Well, either way, that's part of the problem of our base. We need to uh, organize things a little bit more efficiently. So one way or another, we've got this thing set up. What I'm going to do is make sure that this thing proceeds to build up enough energy to build a uh, singularity, and then we can get started with our new base. Um, while that's running, though, I do want to figure out how and where I'm going to put my new base. So I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, guys. So step one, I would like to create my new base in a nice, clean Miscraft age. It's always a nice place to set up a new base because mainly you can do cool stuff with it. You can build any kind of age you want. I'm going to go ahead and start digging through all the uh, villagers that are here and find myself a nice Miscraft villager. Clearly, I got none. So good luck that time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ditch these guys and come up with another set. See you guys later. So guys, here's a good tip. When you're trying to trade with villagers, sometimes you'll find a villager that's willing to trade a notebook. And that's usually a good villager to trade with because that notebook will contain a bunch of different pages in it. So let's take a look what we got. Uh, if we look in our notebook and not our Thalmanolicon. Here we go. Oh yeah, we got a bunch of cool stuff. So I'll be back in a minute after I continue to get all kinds of, ooh, I got a molten conductive red metal block. That's cool. Alright guys, so the trick to dealing with all these pages, believe me, there's a lot of them. I don't even think I got close to as many as there are, and you can see I'm just scrolling through pages and pages and pages of pages. And, as you can see, there's just a million things out there. So what I'm going to do first off is break this guy. Luckily, with uh, filing cabinets, they retain their contents when you pick them up. So let's get upstairs and start sorting them into the appropriate places. So your best bet, and what I usually like to do, is have several notebooks over here that define exactly what the the contents of the notebook are so let me give you an example first off i made a biomes notebook and any biomes that i find are going to go in there so let's grab just a handful of pages i'm just going to snag randomly in here whatever we get we get uh let's put these away so i can pick that one up cool um all right somehow i have a page on my cursor already there we go so desert biome that belongs in biomes uh eerie biome yep uh, frozen river biome that definitely goes there and what I'll also get is a trash can so that any extra pages that we wind up with we can just throw in the garbage because we don't need more than one of a page uh, so eerie biome I don't even know where it went it was frozen river wasn't it yeah frozen river biome is the one there we go see you later uh, so we've got beach biome that goes in there full length so that's a modifier right uh, and what this we'll call this modifiers so that modifies the attributes of something. So we're going to just put modifiers right there. Full length is kind of a nice one to have, but there's better ones to have. Um, and I don't know how that got copied, but okay. Uh, flat world. That's a world modifier, so I'll call that a modifier as well. So flat world is fine. Full length and flat world. Cloud color. That'll also modify the world in some way. Uh, caves. That's, uh, we'll call that world additions. I forget what they're exactly called, but... It's basically like uh, caves and villages and that kind of thing. So caves can go into the world additions page. And luckily you can middle click in here to organize these so that they look a little bit nicer. That's a huge help. Uh, so brushland biome, uh, we've got bright lighting. That's gonna be a world modifier. So we'll just go ahead and throw that into modifiers. Blue color, uh, more biomes. I think that's another biome, the bloody heap. Autumn Hills is a pretty cool biome, gotta say. Alps and uh, Alps Mountainside. So all these other ones are duplicates, so we can just trash them all. See you later. So that's unfortunately what I'm gonna be doing here for the next few minutes. So modifiers, bright lighting is here still. So let me just junk all this stuff and I'll be back in a few minutes once I've finished um, emptying out the filing cabinet and filling up the um, desk and organizing all my pages. All right, guys, after much, much sorting and organizing of all these pages, I hope you guys like it, those of you who download my world, because it was like two hours worth of work. But I traded for a bunch of pages. I spent a lot of emeralds. I've obviously, uh, I left my emerald generator running. So you can see, you know, these things are up and running here, getting pushed around, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what I want to do now that I've actually managed to collect a bunch of miscraft pages is start working on the age that I want to deal with. Um, now, they're a little tricky to write. I'm not going to lie to you. 
you. So you have to pay close attention if you're really interested in how to write your own ages. You can do a ton of stuff with it. Like I'm not good at building cool looking things, but if you're really good at it and you come up with some cool designs, you can come up with some really neat ages. Um, you guys know that one of my favorite types of age though is a void age. And I know a couple people are probably gonna say like, oh, Dyer, you always do a void age base, but I like void ages. Like it's just, I really like living in like a giant void with nothing nearby and you look around and there's just like emptiness everywhere and just this floating awesome base in the middle and what i'm going to do is make it super high tech uh so that it's you know really just kind of the coolest base it can be and i'll try to do some cool designs and stuff with it because you know guys know like i'm not terribly good at that kind of thing but i'll give it a shot because i know you guys like to see that and um, hopefully we'll be able to make it cool so let's see what we can come up with uh for a really nice design so let's see first thing we're going to want to do is um describe to you guys how to write your own custom age so let's get started writing our books. The way you want to write your ages is you need to put the descriptive modifier first, followed by what's being modified. So for example, I would like to have an age that is all the same biome. And the biome that I'm going to pick for my void age is one that I typically pick because it's the best one to pick. It's the mushroom forest biome or one of the mushroom biomes. Like, uh, let's see, I think I got one. I don't remember for sure. Mushroom Island Shore. That should work. The reason I like to do Mushroom Island Shore is because mobs don't spawn there. So it doesn't matter how dark or bright your area is. Uh, no monsters will spawn. Now, if I have grass, it will spawn the uh, mushroom cows. So that's kind of cool. The mushrooms. So I'll go ahead and add a mushroom island. Now, I want to modify what for Mushroom Island? Well, I want to define what type of biomes we're going to have. So if we look through the modifiers tab I set up, uh, we should see single biomes. So the way we would write, read this is uh, we're going to have a Mushroom Island Shore biome, which is modifying the single biome. So just like in a sentence where you'd say, you know, like a red truck, red modifies the word truck. The truck is the noun and the word red is the adjective. It's kind of similar. The modifier first followed by the thing that's being modified. So a single biome, Mushroom Island Shore world. That's how we're going to write this. So the next thing I'd like to have is a defined uh, sky color. And what I tend to like to go with is a black sky color because it just looks really cool because the void is typically black and the sky color uh, being black just makes it look awesome. So if we came in here, what I want to have is a modifier first, so the black color, and then uh, the celestial. I think I've got sky color in here. Let's see. Sky color. Perfect. Cool. Uh, now a trick to this is you also want to have um, a black fog color as well because that'll help to make it just so that there's no fog anywhere and it looks it just looks better. Trust me, you'll understand when you see it. Um, normally you would see like some crazy fog. Let's see. Maybe modifiers has fog color. I know I had it. There it is. Cool. So I've got a black sky color, black fog color. Uh, the other thing I want to have is probably boundless sky. Yes, cool. So that'll kind of also help with just the visual effect. I don't really understand what boundless sky does. It's a little bit tricky to understand. It basically says it removes the fog obscuring the sky and the stars uh, at the horizon level, but that usually doesn't work for me, which is why I go for black fog color. So I think boundless sky is supposed to remove that fog, but it usually doesn't. I don't know if it's been fixed or what. So now we've got um, defined the biome and we've defined um, the world. So the next thing I'd like to have is make it so that it's always daytime. That's a cool trick. So in order to get what we want to get here, we're going to have to find modifiers. There's zero length, which basically defines that the thing that we're modifying won't move. There's half length, which makes it move faster, double length, which makes it move slower, and full length, which makes it move normal. Uh, you can do this for uh, both the moon and the sun. Um, and what we'll have here in addition to this, so since we don't want it to ever move, we also want to find, is there a zenith phase? Yes, I got that page, good. Zenith phase means noon. Uh, there's a couple other phases, like I think you can have it at sunset phase. Do I have that one? I thought I had sunset. Could have sworn I did. All right. Setting phase. Yes, yeah, setting is sunset. And I think rising phase is, no, rising phase is sunrise and setting phase is sunset. So you can have the different phases of whatever, moon or sun. Uh, so in order to do this, we're modifying um, the sun. So we want zero length, zero phase, and normal sun. Do I have this guy in here? It should be under celestial if I got it. Normal stars, normal moon, no weather. Did I not get? Oh, good. There it is. Normal sun. Cool. So now we've got a sun that's going to be in the zenith position, always up at the top of the sky and not moving. 
awesome. So now we've got a sun up there, we've got the black sky color, all that kind of cool stuff. Other things we can add if we want. We can define, um, let's see, cloud colors if we want to have a fancy cloud color. I'll leave that off and when you don't add something to a book it kind of randomly adds it for you so we'll just kind of see what we get. I don't want a moon so I'm going to have a dark moon and what that means is it's just a moon that stays put or it actually moves normal but it's dark so it basically doesn't exist. You don't see it. Um, the um, other option would be normal moon. Okay, I could have an ender star field if I want, but the star situation doesn't really matter. Uh, we can also have eternal snow, night sky color, doesn't matter, we're not going to have any night. No weather will be good, I don't want it to have a rain there, so that'll be cool. Normal moon, normal stars, I guess I'll put in normal stars, but like I said, it really doesn't matter. Um, and then I could modify the sky color, which I already did. That looks pretty cool. Sunset color doesn't matter because it's always going to be noon. So you can change all kinds of stuff, as you can see. Uh, let me see about world additions here. Do I want any of this stuff? Caves, deep lakes. I don't think any of this really matters. Floating islands. Because it's going to be a nether age, it doesn't matter. Uh, some things might get added randomly, which would kind of stink, but we'll have to hope that it doesn't. Uh, spheres, strongholds, surface lakes, tendrils, and villages are the ones that I got out of that. Uh, let's see if there's any modifiers I want to put in here before I'm done. Um, it's always a good idea to throw a clear modifier page onto the very end because if there's any modifiers in the book that you didn't assign properly it'll kind of clear them off and not cause any issues uh oh you know what i do want to have bright lighting that would be cool let me let me get that clear modifiers out and put bright lighting in its place there we go so bright lighting then clear modifiers clear modifiers should kind of always be on the end so let me take that out of there in case there's anything else i want bright lighting will make it always appear like there's light in the room it'll constantly be well lit wherever you are that's going to be really cool for us, um, aside from the fact that we're going to, you know, have a bunch of cool stuff built. It means I don't have to worry about having torches all over the place. Now, that only makes it look like it's bright all the time. It's not really bright all the time. So if you were working in a non-Mushroom Island age and you had bright lighting on, it's usually more of a hassle than it's worth because what happens is you can't really tell whether or not it's dark enough for mobs to spawn. It looks like it's bright, but you can't tell because it's always bright. Mobs will start spawning on you and fool you, and it's bad. But because we're going Mushroom Island biome, it doesn't matter. All right, let me just look through modifiers and see if there's anything else I want. You could define the grass color, too, which is kind of neat. One of these days, I'll make a, a proper Gallifrey. All right, so what I'm going to do is grab this notebook out of here. And remember, you want to right-click on all the pages as you're adding them. That will make it copy the page and put it in the book. Um, so we've got all the stuff we want. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves two link panels. And we're going to grab a link panel, and then what you do is you take the book that is having all the pages in it that you want, and you just, um, in here, left click, boom, and it'll paste all the pages so we can see Mushroom Island, Single Biome, Black Sky Color, et cetera, et cetera, across the board. Nice. So now we've got a descriptive book of what we want, and I can combine, oh boy, looks like something goofy happened there. Unlinked linking book. Let's put these notebooks away for now. So I don't know why I have two notebooks on me. I don't know what I did there. A little bit of desyncing going on. Um, so this is age four is what it was called. Um, and I'm going to create my link home book right here. And now we're ready to travel. So let's see what pages we have. We have the Twilight Forest. We have my first stage. I'm going to get this one out of here for now. I don't need to worry about my first age at this time. And go ahead and travel to age four. Nobody panic. Let's see what we get. All right. The world is loading up around me and I'm crossing my fingers that it's something cool. You'll also note, by the way, that it takes, you know, sometimes a little bit of time. Oh boy. What did I get here? Mushroom Island Shore. I did choose a void age, didn't I? Let's head back to the overworld because I don't like that age, so we're just going to pop right back to the overworld and see if I forgot the void age symbol. I could have sworn I threw it in there, but maybe I forgot it, and that would explain why. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I dire derped pretty bad, didn't I? I forgot the void age symbol. All right, so now here's a cool trick on how to copy this book. Um, go ahead and grab your notebook. You know, after I checked like five times that I had everything I wanted, <laughs> and I didn't... Oh boy, dire wolf. Bad dire wolf. So you can just easily copy straight like this. So Mushroom Island Shore, Single Biome. So you can put your descriptive book in the table and just copy right from it. So black sky color, black fog color, 
boundless sky, zero length, zenith phase, normal sun, dark moon, no weather, normal stars, bright lighting, modifiers, do I have void? Tell me I have void. Voids are sometimes hard to find, but I remember finding a couple of them, so yes, I do. And then finally, clear modifiers at the end. So that should be that. Grab two more. Where did all my pages go that I had in there? Didn't I have pages in there? Or am I out of my mind? Must be. Let's get some paper. One, two... Linking book is always the first and most important thing to make. If you forget that, you're going to have a very bad time, especially in a void age. Um, last piece of this puzzle, link panel plus notebook. And we'll name this void age. That sounds cool. Go ahead and put that on there. Now let's see what we got. Cool. Hopefully I didn't derp and forget another important page. Here goes nothing. Again, takes a few seconds for the world to load, uh, but that's because it's generating a whole new dimension. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfection. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like it randomly added a couple modifiers. Remember I told you that it can occasionally add random modifiers? So we got the exact age that we asked for. Um, the problem being that we wound up uh, with a couple random modifiers. It looks like it added some kind of crystals thing, which is cool. I did get the crystals page. It's actually not terrible that we have crystals here, though, because um, these things are nice to have. We can use them for cool stuff in the future. But uh, yeah, it randomly decided. Here's what happens is when you create an age, if it doesn't have enough cool or interesting stuff in it, uh, the age will sometimes randomly add its own modifiers. Uh, so we got another fortress. Pretty neat, but not exactly what I wanted either. So we're going to have to try this again. So I'm just going to basically copy the exact same setup because everything did work the way I wanted it to. Uh, but we're going to copy the exact same setup. It looks like it actually created an island for me as well up here. That's cool. Yeah, I think these are some of the islands that can happen. Um, interesting. And it made it a Jungle Hills island. That's neat. Cool. Well, this is not a terrible attempt, but we're definitely going to want to uh, try that again. Look at that, the crystals running right through the nether wart stuff and mob spawning and everything. That's fun times. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if those mobs can spawn in Mushroom Island biomes. That might not be good if ours Magicka mobs can spawn there, because that might kill my whole mobs can't spawn here plan. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes, guys. All right, guys, we're going to try this one more time. Um, now, I did, as you can probably note, take out the bright lighting page because that was kind of a happy, unfortunate incident that we just ran into there. Um, because what happened is I discovered that the Ars Magica mobs don't respect the whole I'm not going to allow you to spawn in a mushroom biome thing. So uh, we're going to call this Void Age 2. Hopefully this works out well. And we're going to make sure we have our link book ready. There we go, and let's head over to Void Age 2. So because we went there, we found out that Ars Magical Mobs don't respect that rule. It means that if I started building my base, I started, I would have started with a bunch of stuff happening, like seeing um, mobs showing up where I didn't expect them to show up. So kind of good news. Now, I can't say for certain that there's nothing in this age. I have to wait for the terrain to spawn around me, but it looks pretty good. Um, if I give this a few minutes and maybe even fly around, we'll know for sure that it didn't spawn anything. Occasionally while flying, through the world you'll find things like villages or the nether fortress like we saw those things happen after your standard world generation uh, so we can even see some clouds from um, you know the uh, natura mod showing up in the sky that's fine there's nothing you can really do to prevent those things from showing up um, because they're post world gen as well and there's no pages to control them because that's another mods mechanics so uh, oh, look yep yeah, there we go there is something in the distance there it looks like uh, this is one of the uh, libraries from mistcraft kind of hate having stuff in the distance. I might create a couple more ages and just find the right one that doesn't have any stuff that you can see from the spawn area. As long as I can't see it from the spawn area, I'll be fine with it. Obsidian block, mushroom biome, jungle hills biome, dense twilight forest biome. These things are always a great source of books, by the way, if you're looking for a lot of books. Chop down all this stuff and you've got tons. 
Uh, but for now, unfortunately, I think we have to wrap up the episode. So, uh, oh my, 12 pasture, what the heck? That's a wrong number of things to be in this chest. <laughs> Purple color pasture biomes and ravines. Okay, nothing terribly exciting there that I didn't already have. So I will be back next episode um, with a really nice void age. Like I said, gonna use the same pages, but because of the randomness of uh, age generation, sometimes you wind up with extra stuff. This is almost perfect, except for the fact that I can see that thing in the distance and I just don't want that there. So uh, we're gonna get out of here again, and I will catch you guys next time when we have a proper void age let's real quick before we wrap up to check on this guy are you done nice we've got a singularity as you can see lots of other accumulated energy occurring i did wind up doing an export bus stacks at a time of cobblestone getting dumped out so that anything that does land in the AA system over here gets dumped so that's cool at least all right guys direwolf 20 signing off really hope you enjoyed the episode uh some good progress with miscraft today we will have a new base pretty soon hope you guys are excited for it take it easy